Hey, what's going on everybody? Sam Heine here with Family Realty, standing next to Brandon Fields and Brandon Budorf with Twin Spires Remodeling. Uh, we're standing in a house that I just got under contract in the Upper Highlands uh, for a couple buyers that I'm working with. And basically the conversation that I had with them and looking for a house right now, it's a seller's market. There's less houses on the market selling than there are buyers buying. And so for a lot of houses, in a lot of cases, with the, the, with the top tier finishes that are all remodeled and polished, you're gonna be paying a premium for those houses. So we. You know, we went the alternative direction with it and picked a house that we came in and got it for a little bit under market value. It has a few projects, it has a few remodels that uh, they were okay with taking on and, and sort of making into the way that they would want them to look in their perfect in their perfect house. And so I wanted to bring these guys in and kind of get their opinion on the, the different opportunities that uh, that these new buyers can uh, can take and run with them in remodeling the new house. Yeah. Thanks for having us here, Sam. Yeah, we always love coming into these Highlands houses because it's just endless opportunities. Uh, we like to kind of sit down, figure out your budget, you know, what kind of range you're really in so we can design a project around that and, you know, as crazy as room additions or staying in the space. We're, we're just trying to find the best thing to fit the, fit the customer. But in this tight market, I mean, we've, we've got to come in with some really out of the box ideas like we've kind of come up with here today mm -hmm. so that they can get the best of both worlds as far as return on investment, you know, and loving the house. Right. It's a different strategy too. I mean, because you, you have like, to be open to it. Yep. You got to be open to, to rolling your sleeves up, partnering with the right people that, that right. can do the heavy lifting for you. But, you know, thinking imaginatively on how to maybe get the house for less, putting X amount into it after closing, but then maybe you can turn around and sell it sure. then or five years down the road for. Yep. And you really have to decide what, I mean, return on investment, that's important to everybody, but you know, if you buy a Lexus versus a Toyota, you know, that they have the same options. There's some things you're gonna pay for that you're not gonna get all your money back on. It's the experience, it's the memories, mm -hmm. um, and different things like that, and how, how you're gonna live. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you get that budget, you kind of you know where your highest return on your investment is. Opening up floor plans, kitchens, and bathrooms are always going to be your highest return on your investment, and, and give you the most wow factor on a day to day basis. Like Brandon said, a, a Toyota will get everyone to work, but we all like to drive a Lexus. Right. So if you if you can get that and, and work your budget and your wish list uh, to where you're happy with what you're spending and right. happy with what you're getting. Um, there's always a little bit of negotiation, uh, I think, for the buyer or uh, for the uh, owner to figure out, hey, this is what we can spend. We can do this if we spend a little bit more or, hey, if we want to stay on budget, we're going to make yeah. these modifications and still, you know, try to get everything you can yeah. uh, without exceeding a budget or doing some type of modification. We like to say that uh, you have your wish list and your budget and where they meet is reality. That right. point of intersection is, is reality. Right. Uh, if they want to do something additional, you either need to increase the budget or if they want to stay on budget, then you need to modify the scope. Yeah, I like that analogy though because you know ROI is, is something that I know a lot of buyers that I work with look at, but you really can't put a, a price on yeah. quality of life. You right. can if you have a if you have a budget, you can stick to that. But like right. a quality of life deserves a, a price tag as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we if we come, we say your projects a hundred thousand dollars and and you go back and you do all the research say you know i think the house would be worth sixty thousand dollars more it's just like buying that hundred thousand dollar lexus man as soon as you run off the lot right. it's worth less so what we want to do is you, you can't have blinders on you know we, we walk in all the time people are like this is what we want this is what we want and then we say well let, let's think about all the options so what we really love to do is let's give them the puzzle and let them put it together so mm -hmm. they can understand why that quartz is more or that cabinet's more or that flooring's more or moving this wall versus that wall. So, you know, if, if you did it all together, it's this big, crazy $100,000 number, but you know, if you start massaging some things, I mean, we might get it to 75, right. might get it to 45, you know, the, we really like to put the puzzle together, give them the pieces, mm -hmm. you know, and what looks best for you. Just a quick question that I get a lot, you know, like whenever you're approaching a remodel, and you all have a lot of experience in this, but uh, buyers ask me a lot, sellers ask me a lot, what are the little projects that I can do in my house that is gonna give me the biggest ROI? You know, you hear about the, the, the front doors you were mentioning that get you a 200% return on your investment, or the garage doors. People say kitchens and bathrooms sell houses, you know, with the, the big open spaces whenever they're nicely remodeled. Like, what have you all seen that really can bring an ROI to the table? No, number one's kitchens and baths. Um, after that would be basements for sure, but kitchens and baths, highest return. Uh, 
it's what people are looking for. It's the nightmare project that they don't want to live through and different things. So when, when that's already done, that's, that's definitely the highest ROI. But for us, a, a big, big piece of it is, is staying in the footprint. A lot of people immediately think that a room addition is the only thing that's gonna answer all their questions. And we're really good at coming in and, and throwing you four or five ideas. You might hate four of them, but we're gonna find something that clicks and you're gonna realize maybe I can stay in this footprint and this project can be 30, 40% less than what we initially thought and we can still answer all of our questions. Well, especially in a seller market too. So someone may not be a basement person, they don't have enough windows down there and they're gonna do a $100,000 addition. Well, what if we put a $5,000, $6,000 window well in there, have an egress window, get a fourth bedroom in the basement, and have only two upstairs, move your master to your first floor, stay within this footprint, and now you actually have a basement that's usable, legal, has a lot of daylight. Um, not only will you enjoy it, you get the luxury factor and the enjoyment of it, but when you go to sell it, it's people are gonna walk in and just be wowed and in the seller's market that house is getting multiple offers mm -hmm. immediately, not because it has the you know hundred and fifty thousand dollar, you know, super awesome master suite and has five bedrooms. So they didn't really need five bedrooms. They just need to rework the space. And it's gonna be probably two hundred, three hundred percent less of a of a cost to go out or less to stay inside that footprint because of foundation, because of exterior walls, roof, windows, HVAC, all the stuff that you already have in in a normal footprint or an existing footprint, mm -hmm. you have to add or supplement that on the uh, the addition. So Brandon's right. If we can come up with a plan to stay inside the space, we can usually save people, you know, a fraction of what they would be spending if they went outside. And we do the additions all the time because sometimes that is the right sometimes answer. Sometimes it's the only option, but mm -hmm. more times than not, it's actually not needed. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate y'all coming in because like I said, it's just slim pickings out there. And, right. so, and I think seller's market. it's a seller's market. And so the pickings that you do find, you're, there's multiple offers on the table. And so I think this is a really cool alternative to just going for the turnkeys once you create your own turnkey yeah, right. that you enjoy living in. Right. So, yep. right. so uh, all right, well, let's, uh, let's dive in. Okay. That's it. Sounds good. Uh, here's a house where it's, you run into a lot of uh, these over uh, the course of a career that it's an older home, chopped up, lots of little spaces, and really what most people want to do is open it up. It's first thing that screams to me is uh, put a, a beam in on both sides of this low bearing wall, maybe add a decorative column, and open up some spaces for more connectivity. I don't know, what, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, everybody wants that open floor plan, uh, but it's also really easy to get blinders on when you're looking at this, because just because the, the kitchen is in this uh, back corner of the house, that does not mean it needs to stay here. So the, the, really the vision that we had walking through here is to move the kitchen over to this dining room and let it open up into the front and this become more of an eat-in, maybe a dining space, pantry space, which will really start making more sense once we have it in CAD and, and have all our dimensions and come up with even more ideas. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a perfect example of where you know a house has some potential, uh, feel that you're buying it right because the most important space in the house hasn't been updated at all, mm -hmm. uh, not even the appliances. So first place you would do is definitely figure out where does the kitchen make the most sense. Uh, and yeah, you might have a window that you're going to remove and uh, you can either lay brick back in or you can put a fake shutter on the outside and insulate it and use that wall space for cabinets. Um, also notice that this uh, first floor doesn't have a bathroom. So I think if you head back in this direction, might be a nice space. You have a, a fireplace here in the living room and you have a, a neat little space behind uh, behind the living room that could easily be part uh, office nook, part half bath. Uh, maybe you don't take out the windows to keep the architectural appeal and you frost them so you have privacy uh, and still keep all of your architectural appeal on the outside. But I think this space would be nice for both of those. One crazy idea that we run into is if you come back into the living room and not, all, not necessarily on this house, but sometimes these older homes have one, two, three, or four fireplaces and they're not even being used. This one has a, a electric insert in it. Well, when you have a new HVAC system, we're using that for all heating and all air conditioning purposes. This is really just decorative. Uh, if this is not your style, lots of people don't know that you could actually remove this if there's no gas flues or ventilation system running through there and the fireplace isn't being used 
and actually reclaim this space for living space. Maybe reorientate your living room. It makes more sense to put the TV on a different wall and now it's just floating the couch. Sure. So those are out of the box ideas, uh, examples that we like to come up with sometimes to really let people know you actually do have more opportunity probably than you think.